In the previous installment of this series, I laid out the events leading up to the inclusion of fluid grid layouts in Dreamweaver CS6 and walked you through the process of creating a fluid grid layout with its emphasis on mobile first. In this installment, we are going to open the layout, work on the design of the mobile, tablet, and desktop layouts, preview them in a browser, and then we're going to start looking at styling the content. So let's get started. I started this project by simply stacking the divs on top of each other in the mobile layout. As I pointed out, it is important to start with mobile first because the order of the divs ripples through the entire project. You need to do this in the mobile layout before you start snapping the divs to the grid in the tablet and desktop layouts. Here's why. If I open the Fluid CSS, You'll see the key here is understanding how styles are organized into the three layouts. The first one is the mobile layout. You can see that it's 480 pixels and below. And also, this one is slightly misleading because, as you can see, there's no media query in here, which means these styles are used by all browsers as the jumping off point for fluid grid layouts. And it also ensures these styles are applied to browsers and devices that don't understand media queries. This approach also explains the mobile first concept. If I scroll down to the tablet layout, you can see that it's designed for screens that are 481 to 768 pixels in width. And there is an app media rule that applies to screens with a minimum width of 481 pixels. Moving down, we land at the desktop, which gives us a maximum width of 769 to 1232 pixels. Again, there is an app media rule that applies only to screens with a minimum width of 769 pixels. The other thing you should have noticed is that the first rule for each section is for the grid container class, which controls the div that is wrapped around the entire layout. As you can see here, the max width property is set to 1232 pixels. Now I find that to be a little bit large, so I'm gonna change that to 1000 pixels. And I'm just going to refresh the design. Okay. Now you can make these changes to the desktop to suit your needs, but I urge you to exercise extreme caution when doing the same thing with the tablet and mobile layouts. The desktop is the only one with a hardwired number in it. The rest of them, first off, don't even contain the property, and you they can control the width as a responsive design. The other thing is, is that if you scroll through the CSS, you can see that each of the rules for your divs have been added to, well, each of the layouts. This is why it is so important to start stacking in the mobile layout. It ensures all of the rules in the tablet and desktop layouts are properly initialized. Okay, let's pop out of the CSS and take a look at the tablet and in design view. So I'm going to go over to design view and I'm going to select tablet. Now this looks pretty good. You can see that the divs are stacked. It's a little bit long and we'll deal with that in a minute. And if we come over to the desktop, we've got a huge problem here because the line length is just too long, which means that the div is too wide. Now to change the size of a div is really not that difficult. What you do is you just click on the div and you can see that there are handles located here. And this handle right here controls the div width. So if I pull this in to say five columns, and as you notice as I drag across, it tells me what my column width is. So if I come inside here to five columns and release, this div immediately snaps to the edge of the fifth column. Now I want to bring this div up and I can do the same thing. If I select the div, there are my handles. And you might want to you might think, well, gee, I got this space here. Why don't I just pull it in this side and have it pop up? Well, that's not going to work. This handle here shifts the div. And what that means is if I pull it across, 
to here. All it does is it adds this massive margin and pushes the div way off the page. So that's not going to work. I'm going to put that back to zero. And instead, I'm going to bring it in to the four columns. And then I'm just going to click this little button right here, which is move up a row. And you notice it pops up. Now, if I want to move it back, I can just select the move down a row button and back it goes. OK, so we've dealt with the tablet layout now, or the desktop layout. Now let's deal with the tablet layout. Similar sort of situation. This is a little bit long. So I want to take this across five columns. And I've got three columns available here. So that means the side is going to have to be three columns in width. Over to the three columns. I can see that in the tooltip. Click the move up a row button. And I now have my layout. And if I come to the mobile layout, everything is in place. So we've got the divs placed. We've got the uh, rows in position. How does all this look? Well, the first thing we want to do is a save, save all, just to save the project. And then let's preview in a browser. And I think we'll preview in Google Chrome. And you can see there it is in Chrome. Everything's in place. And if I take the width, you can see that it's now starting to act in the way we expect the fluid grid. Notice how the column widths change. And if I scroll down, you can see everything is stacked. So I'm going to kick out of Chrome here. Now, there is nothing mysterious that Dreamweaver is doing behind the scenes. It is simply floating the divs, and the move up a row and start a new row icons do nothing more than control the clear property of the div that is in play. When you move up a row, the div's clear property is changed to none, and when you start a new row, the clear property is set to both. So as you've seen, adjusting the layout from the mobile div stack for the tablet and desktop layouts is incredibly easy. Simply drag a handle and pay attention to the resulting tooltip to set the div's width across the number of columns called for in your design. When you release the mouse, the div automatically snaps to the right width. And if you change your mind, you can get back to the start point by click, clicking the Start New Row button for the div. To move a div into the empty space, all you have to do is click the Move Up a Row icon at the top of the selected div. Just keep in mind, the right and left handles have radically different functions. The right handle resizes the div. The left handle increases or decreases the margin. In the next video, we're going to take it to the next step, and I'm going to show you how one manages the styles in a fluid grid layout. I'll see you there.